mysterious handbag of the gods, what is it representing? Seeds being scattered? Life support for ancient astronauts, perhaps? While we don't conclusively know what the handbag are, there is little doubt that they are described planet-wide in ancient times, and this suggests it must have been seen in the sky. Yes, the god holds the handbag in the descriptions, but this is a severe solar event encountering Earth's atmosphere, and the handbag of the gods is part of this feature. Wait till you hear this. Andrew Hole puts forth a vision of Gobekli Tepe, which features the mysterious handbag shape relief. The so-called stone T pillar depicts arch clouds across the sky or upper portion of the pillar. Yes, the mysterious handbag of the gods are features of the Squatterman event manifesting through very discrete phases over a very long period of time. Why is it featured here at Gobekli Tepe? According to our friend Kronos, it's a major global archetype we see in the separation of heaven and earth. This is critical in understanding it was the ancient cosmic mountain emanating from the assembly of the gods that was perceived to connect heaven and earth and the separation or loss that occurred in catastrophic fashion. According to the scholars, Temples and pyramids and ziggurats had a cosmic function to heal and restore that break, and they are replicas of the cosmic mountain. Now, in regards to Go Beckley Tepe, it seems the builders purposely buried it all as you know, but we do see the symbols of the squatter man and the assembly of the gods. Our belief lies in this essentially all being a spell they were attempting to cast to restore what was lost, the golden age of the gods. Perhaps this is the first great attempt to heal the separation of heaven and earth. The handbag depicts box-like shape of mesocyclone seen at a distance, with the arc receding from center to behind, where it downdrafts into an unseen cyclone. A distant viewer would only see a line of thunderstorms surrounding the cyclone with Instead of an anvil cloud, the jet stream to the cyclone arcing away just as it depicted. Perhaps the odd figures above the clouds represent the type of thunderstorm discharge we call sprites and gnomes. In a coronal storm, plasma discharges from the cloud tops would not be as rare as they are today. Not that they are all that rare today. Above and below the clouds is space patterned in triangles, cut across by a thin layer of rectangles. This represents the triangular pattern of rarefication and compression in supersonic winds, the narrow layer being a faster jet stream or lindrical layer between conflicting winds with interference patterns making the box-like segregations. The vulture or thunderbird is a stylized representation of the parat instability, also known as the squatter man, where in the petroglyph record it is often depicted with a bird's head. It would have been appearing in the sky as an aurora bringing the portent of doom to come. The legless birds also depict aurora that are fractal repetitions, at least in the partial image of the central plasma column. Below the birds in the base of the T are depictions of a wolf, the howling wind, a salamander, the tidal floods, and a scorpion instead of a dragon, meaning ground to ground discharge. Arrow headed snakes appear here and there, representing lightning or currents. The T pillar itself represents the earth and heavens as above, so below. Was this a shrine made by survivors, or did it have utility in surviving the storms? They must have hid underground to survive, for even if they were in a region of calmer winds, radiation, lightning, and fouled water would have surely killed them if they were unprotected. The implication is clear. However, at Gobekli Tepe, as is every ancient myth, there was an electrical storm the likes of which still influences our everyday culture, our belief and traditions. How mind-numbing is this if it's true? We forgot because of trauma and the 
passage of time, but the pieces just keep fitting together in the Squatter Man theory. But what do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below and remember that the ways by which we arrive at knowledge are hardly less wonderful than the discovery of these things themselves. The ancient civilizations of the earth have remained silent for millennia, but they left a message for us to find. The astronomical clock at Giza, the curious remains of Puma Punku, and the true age of humankind emerging in the timeline of the findings at Gobekli Tepe. These remains are dating back to a time in history that is before any known technological breakthroughs, yet they are beyond current understanding as to how they were built by whom and why, or what they even are. The Great Pyramid of Giza was built to such an over-engineered degree that it has seriously grasped the attention as to how it was built and what machines may have been available to a lost civilization who would construct something so complex that we couldn't replicate it today. Yet, the Great Pyramid of Giza was built to perfection as the biggest, most unbelievably complex megalithic structure in this region at the first attempt and progressed, then regressed. It is almost inconceivable that a 4.5 billion year old planet only reached its pinnacle within the last 5,000 years. And perhaps these structures are telling us something about cycles and patterns that may have predestined the fate of the people who built them and what that means for us. We are the descendants of a lost civilization. They were the ones who sought to build megalithic structures on the earth with stone that could not be moved and would not weather. So they would reach through the ages to tell us something very important for humanity. Their message points to the stars and is being deciphered in modern times. Armed with this understanding, the Lost History Channel is determined to help recover the history of our kind that was lost for so long. What it all means and what it is telling us about our future. We invite you to subscribe. Your journey starts here. Wait till you hear this.